Get Fixed Boy was the new hardest difficulty introduced by Terraria 1.4.4, and Calamity is currently the biggest mod on the Terraria scene. So what if we just mash them together? Guys, what's wrong with us? We, we chose to do this. What have you done to the house? No! <laughs> You're a bad person for doing that. All right, I'm I'm, de I'm deleting the world. We're not friends anymore. Oh uh, what? What? <laughs> what is wrong with you? Oh, did you say you got an optic staff? Optic staff. No! I'm sorry. What? Oh, guys! Oh, oh my God! He actually is. is. Ah. Just, oh! 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 Fire! What the heck? Oh boy! I got titanium ore. What? I never thought I'd return to this seed. I already did one full run of Get Fixed Boy, though the videos are pretty old at this point. You can find the playlist and watch it if you want, but I wouldn't recommend it. Now, I have beaten Terraria Hardcore, Vanilla Get Fixed Boy Seed, and Calamity Infernum, all of which are touted as some of the hardest difficulties in the game. I guess I did do Infernum multiplayer and am doing this one multiplayer as well, but I think Calamity has done something quite special with the seed as it truly is the hardest run I've ever done in Terraria. Perhaps aside from hardcore because, well, it's hardcore. So I'd recommend it for those who want to do a challenging multiplayer run. The only problem is it's absolutely and totally broken, but we'll see why at the end of the video. For now, I'm discovering the immediate changes that have been made to the even smallest enemy. Oh, oh, that slime. Oh, oh, the slime. Oh, why is it moving like this? That's not normal. That is not normal. You see, I turned on death mode. <laughs> I also rediscovered that this mod makes all demons voodoo doll demons. And considering that two of the guys playing with us, Winston and Billy, have never actually played on the Get Fixed Boy Seed before, I started to wonder what problems might arise as they get acclimated. Uh, yeah, so I'm remembering that Greystones, uh, kill you. Wait, no, what are you, you doing? What are you both doing? Let's see, I figured dying on purpose. No! Uh, oh, I, wait! It, the Greystones might kill the demons, it's not working. That was Snake Boy, actually. The guy who did the first Get Fixed Boy run with me, and, well, I'm not so sure he's ready for this either. <laughs> but that fear was immediately wiped away. I got a Blade Crest Oath Sword! Wait, what? what? Yeah, because we killed demons. Oh yeah. my goodness. Dude, That's so broken. You dude. are our strong. Get over here. We need your help at the house. Oh, yeah. Guys, we're, guys, we're ready. We're ready, guys. Let's take oh, on King please. Slime. For those who don't know, this sword is strong enough to carry you through pre hard mode in regular calamity, unless they nerfed it or something since I last used it. But I don't think they have since I left the house real quickly with some 20 slimes around it and came back to discover they had all been slain. So, spawning in the underworld where the sword could readily drop from the surrounding demons is kind of broken, but not even close to how broken it's going to get. I managed to finish the house, so hopefully NPCs will move in and the spawn rates will start to chill out a bit, but we're on our way upwards to the RGB biome, where Winston learns the meaning of boulder tombstones. Wait, what, what are you talking about? Oh, what? <laughs> what? <laughs> oh, it's like a bolt. That's what you were talking about that kills you. That feature alone is enough to balance multiplayer, in my opinion. But I survived the tombstone and actually managed to sneak my way through the entire biome into the above forest and that was much simpler than it was when we first did this and I managed to snag the first life crystal of the run. My peaceful excursion ends and I return home awaiting a kind and welcoming reunion with the boys down there only to discover there is a graveyard and the house is once again surrounded by slimes. Worse yet, the only guy who had a good weapon, Snake Boy, was AFK! And even worse still, every death meant a new tombstone and if we mined a tombstone, a ghost would spawn and kill us, resulting in another tombstone! The whole effort was pointless, so I abandoned Billy to figure it out on his own, but he had the same idea and left the house, and I don't know how you play Terraria with friends, but whenever we play, there's definitely a lot of stealing each other's loot. Goodbye, tree. Now, why would you... You're a bad person for you're doing not, that. You're not allowed to have wood. At least we do still work together and continue heading upward to... Okay, no more teamwork. Those tombstones can be a real problem, but sometimes your friends are an even greater problem. See, Billy didn't feel like mining through the crispy honey piecemeal and would whitelist those blocks on vein miner so he could remove all the crispy honey at once. And if you've played the seed before, you know that those blocks can spawn lava when mined. And when you mine a massive vein of them in the RGB biome, what do you think 
is going to happen. Oh, what are you guys doing? What? What are you doing to the house? Why did Oryx excavate? I didn't no. excavate anything. What happened? No. What happened? <laughs> the house is flooded with lava. <laughs> Wait, what? How? You are excavated, I not, honey! I, that I has to be I it! Not. I promise you I did not. So that took a good chunk of time to clean up, but we are at last getting more used to the seed. Dying is just a natural part of Get Fixed Boy, but I did find some Hermes boots and built up a wall on either side of the house so slimes and demons couldn't get in the way of us heading into the up, upward, what is <laughs> up? But we at least made town a bit safer for us to return to, and that allowed me to explore a bit more until I came across the tundra. Me and Snake Boy continue to brave the tundra, where we were reminded that Queen Bee Larva can spawn literally anywhere in the world, and the great weapon Snake Boy got, the Oath Sword, goes through blocks with pretty good range, so we realized just how dangerous that weapon was, not only to our enemies, but to ourselves. Hopefully this doesn't hit the hive. <laughs> <laughs> We managed to sneak past this one though and stumbled upon an ice chest. Nah, I'm safe. What? My ah! game yes! Oh, I'm That's mine! I slid away from it like I had it open yep. and I drifted too far away. That's the worst thing ever. We're not friends anymore. It wasn't long until I was sent back home and, well, I remembered that one of the smartest things we did in our last Get Fixed Boy run was set up pylons and set them up fast. Getting around in this seed is awful, and since you die so very often, having a teleporting network is a godsend. Now so far, I've only been showing you some of the stuff I've managed to sneak out from under the boys' noses. I've gathered a good number of life crystals, and I came across a fledgling staff, but I still don't have any weapons outside of the starting stuff, while all the other boys have oath swords. Ooh, the ice blade. Ooh, oh, I... that must be nice. Hey, 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 what, what I mean, I don't really I need do? it, so maybe I should just sell it. Yeah, just sell it. I, Everything else has I good weapons my... already. Yeah. I right, will. I'm, I'm, I'm deleting the world. <laughs> I'm deleting. I also have Hermes boots, but hardly any other accessories to speak of, while Winston has found three double jump accessories, at least one of which was a blizzard in the bottle, and the other boys had at least one of them as well. Sometimes this first come, first serves cutthroat mentality doesn't play out in your favor. Tensions were starting to run high. Me and the boys were all eyeing each other, waiting to see who would stab us in the back next. None of us could trust the other's money-grubbing hands with anything. And I was no better than the boys. So <laughs> I heard Snake Boy killing a mimic, and these things dropped their normal hard mode gear in the seed, and not just one, but two or three of them but I heard him and started mining up to him with devious intentions. Along the way, I came across a treasure chest with a cloud in a bottle, a glorious find, proving I don't need the boys to increase my power, but I still want to conduct my dastardly plan. Snake Boy had boxed himself in and was using a sentry to kill the mimic, and I planned on going around the outside and shooting it from a safe distance. From here, I am better positioned to snag the loot before Snake Boy can. At last, I will get some good gear. Oh no. Right. No! no! Please! I hate you, Jake. Hold on, we can make this happen. We can make this happen. You guys are gonna be thanking me. We have the other sword. The boys did actually try to beat her, but failed, obviously. But Queen Bee made me realize something. Maybe treasure isn't worth sacrificing your friends over. Maybe the money isn't really worth it. The gear, the weapons in this 2D pixel art game can't hold a candle to the friends I have and the fun times we share together. Oh look, another mimic! A chest! <laughs> Wait, what? That's not a it's mimic. It's definitely not a mimic. <laughs> no, it's definitely a mimic. Dude. But, it's but sitting we on can't rails. Hit it yet. Yeah, you have to wake it up. That's when? Yeah, probably this update. Who knows? Oh, jeez. Ah! Ah! Get him! I... Get him, mimic! Get him! <laughs> you are super rude, man. Oh, what? What? <laughs> what is wrong with you? That's sad. It's too bad I'm much too much of a gamer. Darn it, the assassination attempt didn't work. I mean, I just wanted platinum more. At least we killed the mimic together and accidentally, or not, ended up sharing the loot. Maybe our friendship can be restored in the breaking of bread and the sharing of wealth. And as we approach the next mimic who spawns in almost the exact same location as the last one, we can truly work together as friends. Come on. <laughs> Oh, good luck. 
get a mimic. Oh, yes. How does it feel? This didn't stop either. I already had full health, but the other boys didn't since heart crystals were one thing I was able to gather a lot of, and Snake Boy was on his way to another heart crystal, which I was going to sneak out from under him just for the heck of it. Hey, but, uh, I don't anybody, think so. Oh, you're back. Are you off the right? I was going to give you a... No! <laughs> Ow. <laughs> But that's a really small win. At this point, Snake Boy and Winston both had Frost Brands. Yes, you heard me right, Frost Brands. The hard mode sword nobody ever uses because it drops from Ice Chest Mimics that just happen to spawn in this seed. Now both of them have broken weapons, but we'll all get far more broken than this at the end. But the little power Winston had must have gone straight to his head because he thought we were ready for the first boss. What the uh, heck? In slime. Your eyes do not deceive you. That was King Slime, or as I like to call him, the RGB Gamer Slime, who literally took up the entire screen. I didn't think much of it since I didn't have any good weapons, but this was the first real sign that Calamity Get Fixed Boy really is the hardest difficulty. We are, however, just at the point where we start fighting bosses. Only problem is, I'm still the only one at full health, and some of the boys only have a meager 200. So as I continue collecting life crystals, I have to make a few decisions as to who to give them to, but Winston speaks my language and gave me an ice sword in exchange for one of the life crystals I had. Let's go! <laughs> Let's go! <laughs> Human being. <laughs> We did a lot of exploring after that, and I continued to be the first one finding all the life crystals. Life crystal? You have full health, you're fine. I don't have full health. Ooh. You don't? No. Oh, evil presence. Oh, wait, oh, 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 oh I thought for sure wait, that was... Oh, it is a mimic! Oh, 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 oh. <laughs> I was gonna say, I thought for sure it was a mimic. <laughs> Something about me and Snake Boy just makes all the mimics spawn, but as you heard and saw, an evil presence was watching us, and sure enough, the Aya Cthulhu spawned. And who would have spawned on other than me, the guy desperately trying to kill a tanky ice mimic so I could get my hands on a frost brand? This game just does not want me to have a good weapon, but apparently neither do the boys, because during a return trip, one of them spawned a wall of fresh. I think it was an accident, but you never know with these guys. Oh, wait, wait, no! What did you do? I'm dying. What did you do? No! I was You're making safe. it to the jungle! You're literally I'm... safe. Nothing's gonna happen. No, there's imps! There's imps attacking oh, there's me! Imps. <laughs> there's imps attacking me! You know you what's know crazy? Wait, what? <laughs> Investigations have been launched into who spawned the wall, but have yet to reap any conclusive results. Anyways, I found a super long minecart track, and this brought me to the sunken sea. I guess at this point I should say that I'm actually playing Calamity's rogue class, but I have yet to get anything that a rogue could use. There's probably a weapon or two or something that I could have made, but I've never actually played Rogue before, so I'm pretty unfamiliar with the whole thing. Regardless, the sea prisms I could mine here are used to craft some of the Rogue gear, so this is a big find for me. Only problem is that I'm pretty low in the world, meaning the desert is above it. But worse yet, it connects to the RGB biome, so all the water in here automatically drains. But the sunken sea also makes its own water, and so we have water constantly falling on our world. Absolutely wonderfully broken. We did a bunch of stuff after that. I made some jungle housing for another pylon. Queen Bee kept on getting spawned and killing all of us. This is what the Blood Moon looks like. I finally crafted rogue armor and we set up an arena to get to the first real boss battle. We were ready for the Aya Cthulhu and after seeing King Slime, I was hopeful that the actual battle would be fun. The eye had spawned before, but I did so little damage that it felt pretty vanilla. And after fighting it for real, it was still pretty much vanilla. It shoots some projectiles, had more health and slightly different AI, but overall, the boss wasn't all that interesting. What he dropped, however, was a different story altogether. Wait, the optic staff? Where's the treasure bag? I didn't get a treasure bag, guys. Oh, you didn't? No, I didn't I get got a, I got a lower, but no treasure bag. Yeah, me too. Guys. Also, oh, do you say you got the optic staff? Optic staff. What? Um. <laughs> a treasure bag didn't drop for any of us except Billy, which is weird. But we did get the optic staff, which is just a bit busted. The eye may have been disappointing, but we've already seen the slime 
but we hadn't even seen the half of it. Oh, oh too late. No, no. Oh, run, run right. right. Run right. <laughs> What? <laughs> uh, the entire screen. Okay, this is actually super fun. We quickly learned running in one direction was the best strategy, but it wasn't as simple as that. This did lead me to actually discovering a strat, though. It would seem he teleports onto the other side of you if you run into a straight line, so you have to go back and forth. I managed to hold this pattern for a while, but in the end, too many of his little buddies spawned for me to handle alone. Help! Kill it! Ah, no! Oh, it's got the crystal! It's got the crystal! And it's got the crystal. Oh, oh, oh! Oh, it's so small! Oh, we got oh, it! We got it! We got it! RGB Gamer King Slime might be one of my favorite modded bosses now. No good reason other than we were just having a fun time while fighting him. But that's two bosses down. Normally, the evil biome would be next, but there are some modded Calamity ones we could try. We just have to get to those biomes and do a little more preparation and gearing up, which obviously includes dying to Queen Bee again. And it turns out she spawns Hellbats and they drop lava, resulting in spawn being flooded again. <laughs> I put down a Tundra Pylon, put in some work on the platforms over the lake on our right. I fished for specular fish since wormhole potions would be very nice to have in the seed. The surface was calling my name, so I checked it out real quick. We came across the jungle temple, which was actually in a normal place in the world, and that was really weird, since in vanilla, the entrance to the temple was on the surface, and the entire temple itself nearly went all the way from the surface to the underworld. It would seem Calamity changed it to be much smaller. We also came across the naturally spawning Plantera arena, which is handy, but most importantly, it means Snake Boy found the shimmer. Now those sharp-minded of you may already have thoughts of what we could do with this shimmer to absolutely destroy progression. Ah! Oh, they killed both of us! But we hadn't thought of it yet. All we were thinking about was getting the health regen permabuff stuff from this thing, and I was excited to use wormholes to get stuck inside blocks. And before we continue really quick, I'll be throwing one stick of dynamite at the end of the year for every subscriber I have, so if you want to claim your stick of dynamite today and enjoy the content, be sure to subscribe right now. Now, although the shimmer was great, it did introduce a new problem. See, the shimmer was in a corrupt biome, and hive tumors would spawn in there all the time. And what made this particularly bad is that these things only had five health. So if a stray projectile just so happened to graze one of these things, then the hive mind would spawn and ruin our day. And of course, this is Get Fixed Boy, so enemies are always spawning, so we can't exactly just not attack. But now that the Shimmer was discovered, I joined Billy in the desert since he needed some stuff for his ranger build or whatever. And while I was there, I came across the magic conch, at which point I no longer cared about helping my friend since I was curious if this thing was an easy ticket to the surface. And sure enough, it was. Now with a quick gravitation potion, I could search the skies for- Oh wait, oh no! I totally forgot that was a thing. On the return attempt, I discovered that the other ocean it teleports me to is the Toxic Waste, or whatever this is, and it spawned me near the bottom of the map, which I thought was odd. But then I remembered the Abyss biome. Usually, that's at the bottom of the map. Oh no. Don't tell me they spawned the Abyss upside down. I'll have to figure that out later, since I can't really get to that side of the surface real easily. I also remembered after discovering some sky islands that all the treasure chests up here are locked, so exploring them didn't even really help in any way. So I returned to the desert to carve out an arena, and it's probably time we finally take down the Desert Scourge. Only problem is, Snake Boy has other ideas and places enough torches for a torch god to spawn, and he's actually, unironically, hard to beat. Two hits from this thing and you're toast. The number of debuffs it gives you is insane. I'm also pretty sure it went through a whole lot more torches than Vanilla Torch God. Either that or the boys wouldn't stop placing torches, so we made this event way harder on ourselves than it needed to be. But once we had all conquered the event, it was time to move on to the Desert Scourge, who's supposed to be a pushover. Right? Well, not in this seed. I was killed very shortly into the battle, and the others soon followed. On the second fight, I was the last man standing and flew a little low in the arena when the Desert Scourge suddenly transformed into the Aquatic Scourge, who is a mid to late hard mode boss, I think, I forget. 
The reason for this is because the sunken sea is just beneath us, and it would seem the Desert Scourge does not like going to that biome. So I added a platform where the biomes meet as a signal not to go below it. Did that make a difference? No. We kept either dying to the Desert Scourge or spawning the aquatic one. But let's take a quick break from our failure to appreciate that ant lions spew 50 sand blocks at you now instead of just one and they kept messing up our arena. <laughs> Speaking of, the boys decided to put a solid mud block platform on the bottom of the arena to ensure we didn't go below. Problem solved this time, right? Well, no. Now, if one of us died, we'd respawn in the houses that were below the platforms and that caused Aquatic Scourge to spawn. So once one person spawned, we were on a 60 second timer to beat the thing and well, it's got a lot of health. Okay, maybe this boss isn't really that hard. We just can't stop enraging him. It was close, but after moving the house we spawned in, we finally edged out a victory against this thing and that took way longer than any of us were expecting. We also killed the giant clam while we were out there before getting to the next boss, Krabulon. And before we get to him, I just wanted to point out being rogue in this seed is awful, since the next tier of armor for me requires acid wood, and I can't get any of that to grow, and I don't think you could get any to grow, since they need to be on the surface, I think? Maybe? Maybe that is the surface. It's all confused with this seed. Okay, now Krabulon, who lives up to his shroomy origins. Why is the screen like this? Psychedelic? <laughs> Wait! Why are Dude, our people dying? Oh, it's because he's a mushroom he's, man. No, he's on our house! He's <laughs> one of the house! What? Oh, guys! Oh, oh my, my god, he actually is! Ah, he's <laughs> an odd mushroom! What? This is the one of guys, we had an odd mushroom! The odd mushroom. So oh did not eat the shroom! What's oh. going on? <laughs> There's an item called an odd mushroom that creates this effect that you saw and basically it makes you see four or more times the amount of projectiles and entities and maybe some other things as well. It's a bit discombobulating and now we have to deal with it during the boss fight. This is just splendid, although it really isn't all that bad. We just had a small arena so once we widened it out we were able to take him down. And now we're in full boss killing mode. And so we make our way to the corruption to prepare to fight the Eater of Worlds. But this is when the Hive Mind Saga begins. Remember how the tumors that summon this thing have five health? Well, now that we're spending all this time in the corruption, we kept on hitting these things and spawning him. I may or may not have accidentally spawned the Eater while blowing up an arena as well, but you want to guess who joined the party? The Hive Mind, and this never stop. Even once we managed to finish the arena, these tumors kept spawning, and thus the hive mind kept spawning. Even worse than that, it takes forever to kill, and while fighting him, we would discover that a second one had spawned. So even though we came close to beating one of these things, the moment a second one spawned, it became too chaotic to do anything. And then when we summoned the eater on purpose, the brain still spawned. We did poorly against the worm anyways, but the brain wasn't any help. I even set up walls on the outer parts of the arena to prevent stray projectiles from hitting tumors outside the arena, but the tumors were spawning inside the arena. There was no escaping them. This is broken. <laughs> At the very least, we did actually beat the hive once, and I got a developer vanity set, including fully functional hard mode wings. Good ones, too, so I guess the suffering wasn't for nothing. With these bad boys, we summon the worm, and fun fact, every time you break one of its segments, a light disc drops. We didn't beat him in the first fight, but we did break a few segments, so one or two of us got a light disc, which is leagues more powerful than anything else we had. We fought him again and got enough light discs for all of us, and then we finally took down the worm with all of us using said light discs. And that actually illustrates a funny thing about this run so far. We all have our classes and are trying to play them, but the random hard mode drops are making it hard to not just use the one busted weapon we got. At this point, all of us are running light disc class. And if you think carefully, you already know how we're going to break the game. We didn't realize it yet though, so we moved on to the crimson where thankfully the cysts have significantly more health than the tumors. The base of the pyramid was also there, so I was able to snag a sandstorm in a bottle, which was really nice, or at least it would have been if I didn't already have hard mode wings. 
Oh, and these cysts I just said have a lot of health. Well, that doesn't really matter when Billy goes and breaks them on purpose. I, I have an idea. No, no, no! You die on your own. We didn't actually do that bad though. We got it halfway with just two of us, so we felt optimistic. But first, the Brain of Cthulhu. And we had three of us there, and we're feeling pretty good with our busted gear. He's not that tough, and Snake Boy is dead, and Winston is dead, and we killed this boss? <laughs> we got help. We took the next fight with him a little more seriously after that and claimed a victory over the brain. This obviously means the perforators are next. Oh, there's a perforator cyst down there. Hello. Hey, let's what do if it. we just kind of popped that puppy? Wait, 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 please. please. <laughs> I'm a one shot right now, please. I'm one shot away from death, yeah. please. We played it nice, but the agent of chaos needed to be distracted. Top right. Yep, nope, 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 nope. Top right, yep, keep looking. Is he down here? <laughs> Uh, no, I'm just I'm just removing the sand here because uh, yeah, those uh, guys keep spawning. Check yeah. the top left. Check the top left. I think he, he may have not checked thoroughly enough, but it's. Yeah, oh, I don't think I don't think he checked the top oh, right. Please, 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 please. This guy please. Is dying. I don't know. No, I'm not killing. No. Him. Actually, he might not be able to no. stop it. Oh, oh, oh. oh the, it lives. The, the debuff almost destroyed it. It lives. Hey guys, one more hit. <laughs> no, please, don't. I'm, I'm, even though I'm at half health, I will still don't, die in one hit. Don't do it. Don't. A uh, ghost. No, 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 please! Come on, wait! There, there you go, my fungal club is No! Please don't chase me again, please! Well, would you guess we lost that fight? Oh well, we extended the arena and took him down in the next one. And in perfect calamity get fixed boy fashion, it dropped something broken for us. It gets you- wait, I, I, did you get any blood fins from your treasure bag? Blood it fins? restores 240 life. And I blood got fins. I got 4,000 of them. <laughs> if you don't know what blood fins are, don't worry, I didn't either. But they're basically healing potions that restore 250 health. And Snake Boy got 4,000 of them that he split amongst us. So that's pretty handy. You might also be wondering at this point when the super most broken thing is going to happen. And don't worry, we're almost there. But first, Queen Bee is in our way. So I found a really large hive with a nice open area and I kindly give of my time to remove the few obstructions there are, and there's two nice little larvae just chilling inside the hive that are in a nice tucked away corner. Surely, there's no reason the boys wouldn't want to join me in this hive and fight Queen Bee right here. Well, apparently, the answer is no! They found another hive just a short distance away, and it wasn't prepped or anything, so I decided to just do my own thing. All right, I want to spawn Queen Bee. Wait, throw uh, Well, you're you're not going to be um, assisted, so I wouldn't do that if I were you. And I am vindicated. I got Queen Bee all the way to half health on my own. And the best part is, since I was able to do that by myself, the other three boys should be able to deal with it pretty easily, right? Wait, two of you died? What killed you? What are you guys doing? Uh, I did nothing. Well, now I'm going to call them bad at the game, and they should be willing to join me in the hive this time. Right? Well, the answer would once again be no, and gosh darn it, I ain't having it. What if I spawn Queen Bee again? Do it. Uh, you'll die and I'll off at you. I did just about as well as last time, and thankfully the boys were able to hold their own a little longer, and although we ended up bringing her back to spawn and had to fight her in rage for a bit, we managed to take her down. Next up is Skeletron, but first, we have to find the dungeon, and this is when I discovered the abyss really does spawn in upside down, and this is just a sight to behold, oh my goodness. I searched in the corrupt purple trees but found no dungeon, and then I searched in the crimson ones and wasn't finding anything, and as I was about to give up, I stumbled upon the dungeon at last, and created an arena in preparation for Skeletron. And this fight is nothing like it is in vanilla. We quickly learn we're way over our heads and underprepared for this one. He has four arms! Oh, uh, yeah, that's death mode. He's Just, a large oh, individual. oh, fire! What the heck? Oh, boy! That's right. He not only has four hands and shoots waves of skulls at us, he spawns dark casters and diabolists who join in the fun, and none of the projectiles can be stopped with a weapon. You just have to dodge them. Guys, we did 2,000 damage. Oh my goodness. We did that. That's, that's 50%. <laughs> it was after this fight that we discovered the true potential of the Shimmer and the hard mode drops we'd been getting. It started with some hard mode necklace I got from the Desert Scourge. 
From it, I got an Avengers emblem and a Great Sand Shark scale. What about all the light discs the Eater drops, though? Well, it works. I got hollowed bars and souls, but we need an Orichalcum Anvil to use this stuff. Do hollowed bars shimmer down into other bars? Wait, wait, does that turn into titanium when you shimmer hollowed bars? Titanium? But you have titanium. I got titanium ore. What? We got oh, what? Go. Okay, we got adamantite. Next what? up, light fist, wait, baby. How? And at this point, the rest of the bosses were nothing more than a formality. The boys were able to get kitted up with full hollowed armor in pre-hard mode. But I got nothing since I'm a rogue and there's no hollowed rogue armor. And I only got one weapon from this whole game breaking discovery, which sucks. But the other boys are way beyond where they should be. And I have at least one weapon that I think is post Plantera. It's hard to imagine that this is intentional, but maybe it is. Whether it is or not though, we crushed Skeletron, but then lost to Slime God twice, which is the only reason why I'm curious if it's actually intentional, because it's still not easy. But then came the Wall of Fresh, whom we destroyed first try. And that's Calamity Get Fixed Boy in free hard mode. It was a struggle, it continues to be one. But we also have broken progression in an extreme way. The only problem with that is, at some point, we won't be able to break the progression train anymore, and we'll have to actually fight these bosses on tier. Or maybe we are on tier. I don't know. All I know is that Calamity Get Fixed Boy is absolutely broken.